Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Fish's RV today with a big triple slide Arctic Fox fifth wheel. And once again, they're giving me those classic, almost old Fleetwood vibes with like a, a couple little modern touches here and there. But once again, this is not an ultralight. This is a kind of floor plane that from a lot of manufacturers might weigh 10, 11,000 pounds. It weighs about 13.5 here in this Arctic Fox, which is a lot more weight, obviously, but there's reasons for it. Everything on this is thicker, heavier grade, going to be longer lasting. Like it is not the lightest weight, least expensive unit you're going to run into. But if you are truly looking for like retirement grade, I am just really quickly becoming a fan of this brand and I am really enjoying the opportunities that I have to bring stuff like this to you now. Now, um, the, the floor plan isn't necessarily something you haven't seen before, but it is executed overall fairly well. Big refrigerator and some classic high-end features like a soft touch ceiling liner that is going to keep it, the, the noise is going to be drowned out beyond, like this has dual pane windows and a soft touch ceiling liner. It's going to be as quiet in here as like any towable RV you're ever going to find out there. So if you are really just looking for that, like you want to shut the door and drown out the world and just be in peace, this is something that brings that kind of sense and peace of mind from the build. Uh, the king bed in this has plenty of room to walk around it. We're washer dryer ready. A uh, good hot cold camping package in here. Monstrously loud outside storage. I am, I am very, this is kind of rig where like, you tell your friends, yeah, we got an Arctic Fox and uh, maybe I've heard of one of those. Then they come over and then they have dinner for the night and then they leave. And when they're in the car driving home, they're like, man, I didn't know Ted and Martha were like doing that good. Like it is, it's the kind of camper you can flex on your friends with. <laughs> and I think this is actually their largest couples model. This is kind of as big and flashy and fancy as it gets from the Northwood RV uh, fifth wheel family. And they've done some, like I said, I'm going to say this a thousand times, some very classic things here. Now, I've got her all plugged in today, so I had a chance to actually turn on the Whirly Gig blade up top there. And you can, uh, good news is the roof is built well enough that it's not going to go flying off into the sunset over the uh, Salt Lake City, Utah mountains over here. But it, it is pushing around a lot of hot air. I also noticed, um, I was when I was walking around taking my pictures, as I was getting some photos of this sofa over here, my butt suddenly got super warm because the electric space heat and fireplace was turned on and that thing is no joke. Um, now, as long as we're talking about the sofa, let's go ahead and start with that. Crack that thing open right there. You see that is a trifold sleeper sofa and my backside is burning. Once again, you're gonna have barbecue nerd butt over here if I keep it up. And it, you know what? It's the little thing sometimes. That little, that uh, Arctic Fox emblazoned fleece blanket. I love stuff like that. Fle Why, what is it with fleece? I don't even know. What is the material? What's it made out of? I, I don't know. I don't know. If a guy held my family up at gunpoint and said, tell me what fleece is or I'll shoot your family. Uh, first of all, terrifying. <laughs> Secondly, I, I don't know the answer. All I know is that I love it. <laughs> Uh, up top here, we have a noise-canceling ceiling liner in here. It's one of those soft-touch ceiling li liners. I'll get you a better look at it when we uh, go upstairs. But that skylight above these rear recliners over here, that is one of those XL power vent fans. And actually, if you look on the, uh, beside the sofa in the slide over there, you see a white remote control. That is a remote control for the fan above your head, which is awful nice. And this is a rare find nowadays. Actual recliners, not fans theater seats or cinema seats in an RV, but actual recliners. And notice how they went with maximized windows, giving you just awesome visibility of your campsite around here. Like, it's just, it is really cool what they've done. You can see the blackout night roller shades uh, creeping down from the top of the valances right there. They didn't go with any kind of boxy things closing the windows in. I know not everybody's a big fan of that. And that, this slide out is... It, this is one of those things that I can't properly show you on camera, I think, easily. But if you're looking at this, like, the first thing that clued me into it was I went, wow, that is a, it feels like a bigger table. And then I realized that is actually, like, an extra, extra deep slide out over there. Now, this is basically your view from uh, one of the recliners right here. And, of course, the, the recliners can pivot a little bit. If I slide over here a little bit, this is basically what it's going to look like from the sofa. So even though it's an angled entertainment center, it works extremely well. Not to mention the fact 
that you're still kind of in the mix with whatever is happening over here. And I don't know about you. I think this looks a lot cooler all lit up versus what I can normally do running off just battery power. But hey, that's just me. Um, yes, it is carpeting in the slide. Yes, they do use floor heat vents. Those are some classic features that they've retained here. The floor heating is uh, an intentional thing um, as a result of their desire to provide superior heating into this RV. That was their goal there. Um, the, uh, what, what was I going to say after that? Oh, the, the carpeting and the slide. That's one of those things that probably just hasn't been engineered out. That's something that I wouldn't mind seeing in time. Although, every now and then I do talk to some folks who are like, mm, I kind of like uh, a little carpeting. And so I'm looking at that TV. I'm thinking there's some storage behind that. I didn't play with that earlier. Let's find out, shall we? This is either going to go really good or I'm going to look really stupid. Uh, well, I mean, stupider. <laughs> and I am delighted to report I'm only going to have to look regular stupid on the video today and not extra goof stupid. Do <laughs> you and what's funny is with their propensity to like overdo everything, the double gas struts made that TV so easy to lift. I think you actually might want to make sure you strap that down somehow for transit. Just a little pro tip there for you from what I'm seeing and feeling. Big pocket above the fireplace there below the entertainment center means if, I don't know, maybe somebody wanted to bring a gaming system or a uh, like a Blu-ray player or something. That's kind of one of the interesting things is like when you look at higher and higher quality, uh, you know, costlier fifth wheels. A lot of times, um, wow, look at all that storage in the island. That is awesome because they put the sink up front. The island is nothing but storage and prep space, which is my personal preference. Anyway, what I was getting at is like when you hear uh, people, that when you picture a fifth wheel like this, when you picture the average consumer of this RV, you're not thinking of somebody who maybe is interested in a gaming system. But... The Nintendo generation, the kids like me who grew up with Super Mario, we're getting older and we are getting to the point in our lives where sometimes we can afford a couple of the nicer things. So I could actually see that being uh, something somebody could use here. Not to mention gaming systems can be used for general entertainment, not just gaming nowadays, like streaming media and whatnot. They're almost like their own Amazon Fire Stick. The, uh, the cabinetry, by the way, see all hidden hinges, very thick, hefty hardwood cabinet doors. Um, it is an all wood cabinet. It does still have a sticker wrap, so keep that in mind. I've talked this up quite a bit. I want to make sure that you have clear expectations of what you're getting. And just little stuff like this, like you saw the wastebasket, just the little hole where you can pop, just to toss some stuff down in there. I love little things like that. You've got like a little veggie prep sink and then a bigger farm sink next to that. So you can wash and rinse dishes. You can also wash and rinse big pots and pans easy reach appliance outlets in this kitchen as well because they are using things like thicker slide walls which is how they're able to put power outlets in the side of that over there but look at this they have included double side splashes d d d double side splashes <laughs> big convection microwave uh you see a larger furion oven down below there i i mean just They've, that's a sealed burner stove top too. This is a nice kitchen for, uh, like you look at it, the kitchen doesn't look huge. This is a nice kitchen and we're not done with it. Because we still got some drawers galores here, ladies and gentlemen. And down below the giant refrigerator, we have another big giant drawer. That could be good for those bacon sheets for the cookies and biscuits. Don't know how many of you remember the time I didn't realize the camera was rolling and I came up with my own song named Cookies and Biscuits, but that sure was a moment. That is an 18 cubic foot gas electric fridge freezer. Northwood does not do 12 volt or residential fridges to my knowledge. They're exclusively two-way. As a Midwestern boy, um, I prefer uh, 12 volt fridges where I can get them. Uh, this definitely caters to a more Western market, I think, and a lot of people out here still boondock and dry camp. Uh, they like to get an RV. A lot of people build their own solar package or have a generator. So, um, you know, this refrigerator for boondocking and power consumption makes a lot of sense there. But also just, I don't care if you're at a park or if you're in the middle of nowhere, having windows left, right, and center gives you just awesome views of this thing and the vaulted ceiling and that huge skylight up there really opens things up uh as well now actually i'm just gonna start michael jackson hey, hey, moonwalking back here we're gonna go right past our solar charge controller which is currently blinking 
because it doesn't have a battery on it. There's one thing here I don't super love. Like, I like that this is like an actual real door. Um, when you see it and feel it in person, you'll, you'll know what I mean. The, the feel of it is different. The way that it opens, though, you have to come all the way upstairs and then open the door and turn around. At least you don't have to walk backwards down the stairs. I prefer pocket doors where I can get them. Um, I guess, I don't know, maybe that just wasn't an option here. Now, uh, the uh, toilet space here is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge the fact that I think a lot of people will agree that floor vent should have or could have been moved back further or something like that. But again, their, their heat ducting system that they're utilizing here is being done to give them superior function out of their heating systems. And again, uh, when I'm not talking constantly, it is dead quiet in here between the noise canceling from the dual pane windows and that soft touch ceiling liner right there. Anywhere that you see a ceiling vent fan in this, you're going to see one of the bigger ceiling vent fans like that right there. So this RV actually standard from the factory has three of them. One above the recliners, one in the bathroom, and another yet that we haven't seen in the uh, bedroom area. That vaulted ceiling also really opens up the headspace in here. And uh, that, that was something I really enjoyed so I didn't feel like I was getting uh, all trapped and cramped into this thing. Notice in this one here, they're more premium Arctic Fox series. Uh, you're sticking with the solid surface and stainless sinks all the way through. And again, almost like a classic... I, I get Fleetwood Class A motorhome feels when I'm in this with that powered magnifier light over there. Now this mirror back here, it has like normal magnification mode. You see my hand in there? Or you can flip it around to five times magnification mode. Just like that. Look at that big old, let me get it back in the mirror. Look at that big old thumb there. That way you can put your face in that thing and see every little blemish and imperfection and really crank your self-conscious nature up to 11 before you go meet the neighbors. <laughs> or, you know, you could not do that. <laughs> um, this is a very standard bathroom arrangement, so I don't want to spend a terrible amount of time here. What I do want to show you, though, is uh, you have some great linen space. And I like how it's not going to be an elephant enema storage compartment, meaning it's so deep you have to reach in there like you're giving an elephant an enema. Whew, no, thank you. I'd rather stuff be where I can reach it. And then finally, in the bedroom. It took me longer than I am proud to admit uh, to find the, the light switches in the bedroom. In case you're curious, this uh, dresser down here below the entertainment center, they're on the left side of it as we're facing right now. One of the things I do like about it though is it does have a dimmer function. So if like you wake up at night and you need a little bit of light to see what you're doing, you don't want to disturb your partner, you have a good opportunity to uh, do that. And again, those classic features. I know I'm saying that word a lot, but the, the really maximized bedroom storage here is fantastic in this thing, including that little a uh, bench area there next to the washer dryer hookups where you could you could use that like a laundry hamper if you will um that whole front closet you know they utilize the entire nose cap for like shelving storage and whatnot plus you have dedicated additional dresser space beside that now down below the bed there's not really a whole lot of storage there but there is a little like personal effects storage safe there's also a pair of these really nice uh, Arctic Fox like outdoor chairs that after I take them home I would probably use that space more for like extra linens or blankets or something like that um, and I would keep those chairs outside but hey to each their own um, this is a king bed by the way but what's nice is I'm sure you could size that down to a queen did you notice like if you just peek your head over here you don't see household and USB outlets those were on the base of the bed slide and if you went down to a queen, I'm sure you could come up with some kind of little CPAP storage solution as well. Now, a couple things here. This is 50 amp standard. So if you want to add a second air, you can. I'm sure we can get you one like that or we could add it after the fact. But from the factory, again, you've got that third big, big uh, XL vent fan up there with remote control that is mounted in the bed slide so you can always keep the fan running. And just to really open it all up, you have another of those just extra extra large skylights over there <laughs> nobody wants a wimpy 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 skylight they want hefty 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 now when i close this one up for road mode i actually realized you know like it, it feels like they just really went through and just 
I mean, nailed so many things. And again, included so many of those, what we would normally call historically classic features. But, um, you know, in, in, a, in an RV that flirts on the modern edge of things. And then I got down, like, you know, the, the bedroom, the bathroom, travel access was fantastic. Uh, obviously, going down the road, you don't got to worry about the helicopter fan going off up here. Because that thing up there will, uh, you know, not be running in transit. But what I realized in transit is the way that the island is set up, weirdly, in this RV, like, the only thing you can't get to with the slide closed is the refrigerator. Now, you can get to the freezer, but interestingly, if you had to, if your life depended on it, you could actually sneak through there and get back to, I don't know, the, the cabinets above the sofa or the recliners if your life really depended on it. It's just one of, it's just, uh, at the same time, though, trying to be fair here, hear me out on this, I guess... When you're at your destination, I, I get why they did it this way. Because when you look at it uh, at the destination, it, it makes sense. When you look at it in transit, you're like, why didn't they just move the fridge over here where I could get to it? Well, that would mean that you would have open counter space like this right next to a stove, right next to a sofa. And a lot of people don't like that. So they're using the refrigerator as a living room kitchen divider so you don't got to worry about bacon grease slapping you on the face the whole time I was a little more aggressive on that than i meant to kind of stung <laughs> but you see what i'm saying it's a give and a take do you, do you think this was the better way to go do you think that leveraging for destination mode was better than travel mode you tell me is this the right answer or not i don't know and just like the inside the outside is a combination of things that make me cry they're so good and things that make me cry because it feels like it was such an easy thing that they could have done better. But a lot of times easy things are easy things for you and me to take care of. So first of all, just giving you a good look at this thing here. Um, it is somewhat limited on awning space, although I have definitely seen much, much worse. That's not terrible by any means, but it's not amazing awning space. Six point automatic leveling on these, by the way. One of the things that I said, it, it makes me cry because it's so good, is the outside storage on this. It is monstrously large. But as you're seeing, there is no sort of hold back, tie back, catch back. For those baggage doors it's not a hard thing for me as an owner to come up with a little homebrew solution it seems kind of silly that for this kind of money at this level of product that's something that we might need to do however i mean is that fair well passing through the other side of the pass through <laughs> I mean, technically, that's an accurate statement. We get to that fully enclosed protected docking center. The underbelly, all your tanks are enclosed, forced air heated. I believe tank heaters are actually still optional on these because they've proven themselves cold camp capable. They haven't standardized that. I, I think that, you know, where I've said sometimes they, they've done some of the big structural features and they've, they've left what I think are some easy misses or some easy hits, as it would have been, um, off are because this this already is fairly heavy and expensive and they didn't want to go totally pricing themselves out of the market i don't know i think if someone's spending this kind of money they kind of want all the things like you saw in there that you have uh that power cord reel for that big heavy 50 amp cord what is interesting is like the way they just didn't waste anything this is one of those things that i call those endoscopy storage cabinets right here where it actually goes like all the way up to the ceiling um I'm kind of glad they didn't make that door any taller though because you would need a second latch and you'd need a step ladder to get to it. So it kind of makes sense. Oh, the water heater on these. I've not done a good job of describing that on the Northwood RVs that I've covered so far. Um, the, the water heater on all their travel trailers is already larger than almost anything else in their class at a, uh, a 10 gallon vessel. These fifth wheels, all their fifth wheels are using 12 gallon vessel water heaters, which is pretty cool. You can add slide awnings to these from the factory or we could assist you with that. And I mean, look at that extra deep nose cap. That actually really reminds me of a classic Cedar Creek nose cap. Once again, that classic word sneaking into the equation here. But notice how it's got a huge cutaway so you can make some sharp turns. And this is getting to be a heavier fifth wheel. So they've got a heavy suspension package. They've also got that shock dampening pin box to go with it. You see up front here, it's just an open storage compartment, but 
You could throw a generator in there if you wanted to. Um, you know, your uh, little prep points for your transfer switch and all that good stuff. And notice how it's like diamond plate uh, stone guard down under the gooseneck of that thing so that the uh, the rocks flung from the, you know, wheels of your vehicle aren't, you know, Woody Woodpecker <laughs> kind of, you know, pockmarking up the nose. I do a better Woody Woodpecker than that. That was... That was sad, and I'm going to work on that because, folks, you deserve better. I, Josh the RV nerd, do solemnly swear to improve my woodpecker impressions by 15%. Anyway, should have been 37%. That would have been more in brand. Serious propane, guys. Again, lacking a holdback on the door. I don't mind showing that stuff because I want you to have the best possible understanding of what it is you're getting into. But those are 40-pound tanks, not 30s, or not even 20s. Um for a long time i never saw fifth wheels with 20 pound propane tanks and then in the last couple of years i've seen a handful of those sneak back into the marketplace so i want to make sure that i'm pointing stuff like that out you know uh where i can um moving up front here uh behind the entertainment center there is a uh like just a miniature little storage pocket and that plug that we're looking at by the way that is actually the plug for the electric fireplace interestingly kind of visible from the outside but yeah. at the same time it's kind of nice to be able to look at the back side of their cabinetry and see how stuff is finished off those tires by the way 16 inch goodyear radials and i like that kind of i don't know not crimped but like what is it what, what is the pattern on that skirting called i don't know does it have a name does it have to have a name i don't know it just looks cool it looks very rugged and that's another thing is like they're using thicker metal on all this stuff their slide box again is extra deep maximized windows wherever they could put it in a full rear cap um a rear cap versus a rear wall doesn't make the rv better it does look the part though and that's where it kind of surprises me um the designers made the choice to like include the extra money for a rear cap but they didn't include things like you know catches for some of those uh baggage doors there's just some interesting decisions here but again the things they didn't do are low dollar things where if i have a specific preference about it i could handle that or you call one of our people here and say look uh it's a nice rig i'm not buying it though unless it's you know got something to hold the baggage doors over that's easy stuff we can take care of also interesting here i don't know that i'm gonna call it a bumper but it does have like a square sewer tube caddy right there basically like a bumper it just doesn't stick out as far and of course you have the rear receiver hitch here which if you're looking at that looks like i don't know if we're gonna call these safety chain hooks what i actually think this is is uh these are like if you're going up a steep incline if you want to make sure that you're not dragging the hitch this is a little bump and grind uh <laughs> bar right here which is a uh a, a terminology i did not expect to use in an rv tour today <laughs> and folks i've been on the roof of a lot of rvs i've climbed up and down a lot of ladders they use a different ladder on the back of these. It's not something I see from um, Eastern production manufacturers. Maybe it's a, a West Coast only supplied kind of thing. I'm not sure. What I know is that it has absolutely no flex and wiggle when my fat butt climbs up and down that thing. Uh, it's, I don't know what the weight rating is on it. It's gotta be like uh, 350 pounds or above. It just is solid as a rock, absolutely. Now remember, all your vents have the bigger fans. And again, Look at the cross section of this roof up in that skylight. Well, I got, let me, I'm going to turn you around and look at it from the other direction. Pardon me just a second here. Of course, then my personal shadow, my Peter Pan shadow is going to be in the way. There we go. Look at the cross section of that. Look at how thick this is. Not only is that keeping the sun from scorching your scalp, but it is also, uh, <laughs> just keeping the heat in when you're cold camping and as thick as that is, it, I mean, obviously, you could stuff some pillows up into that thing if you, you want to make sure that you don't let any heat out of those because Skylight's basically an R0. Also, up here, this has... All of these Northwood RVs have a simple 45-watt ZAMP battery tender. It's nothing to seriously write home about, but it helps keep the batteries topped off when she's in storage. Where this is nice is it is prepped. If you notice, only one of the two plugs up here on the roof are being used. So if you want to add some extra plugs you could very easily just 
pop an extra panel on this, expand your solar capacity, and use the factory installed charge controller. Or you could pop that one off and get two bigger panels, provided you don't outmuscle the uh, the charge controller. But uh, you're gonna have to go some pretty serious solar for that to be an issue, I think. And remember, you can always check that link in the video description to check for pricing and availability. And uh, also remember, these are basically made out of Oregon. They don't have East Coast and West Coast production. They're West Coast built product. So if you're from further east on the map, if you're in those Midwestern flyover states, if you're looking at the Atlantic Ocean, you call any of our stores. We can call our sister store like this over here, be like, hey, that's a nice Arctic Fox you got. It's mine now. <laughs> and we can get it trucked over. We just need to know what you need and we'll get you camping. And until next time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you're thinking about these. I'm impressed with them. I really am. Again, I get that they're they're gonna be out of a lot of people's budget range. I don't know that I, I, I have the, the comfort to spend that kind of money on a rig right now for something this size, but I know that if I did, I feel very confidently saying it would be there until I was done camping. And I'm somebody who's under 40 years old. This thing could last. It could absolutely last. I am so impressed. So take care, stay safe, have fun. Best wishes from Bishes, everyone. Mm -hmm.